thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the <coughs> organization of this event for the, um, for the invitation. It's a real pleasure for me to be here and sharing some thoughts that we have uh, already developed internally within EDP and also some of our, uh, the way we see uh, things going forward. So just to put things in perspective, um, the big challenge behind all the, the, the main uh, challenges that the energy sector is facing today and that we are discussing here today is related with uh, the decarbonization goal. And the European Commission has set this uh, very ambitious goal to decrease emissions and following this cost-efficient pathway that leads us to a cut of at least 40% by 2030, 60% by 2040, and at least 80% by 2050. And to reach this goal, all sectors will have to contribute. In particular, the power sector will have to be fully decarbonized by 2050, which is the, the light blue area that we see on top. And all the other sectors will also have to contribute, mainly via uh, energy efficiency and also through the electrification of consumption. We all know that uh, electricity will have to partially replace uh, fossil fuel consumption, both uh, to supply the needs for transportation and also for, the, for heating and cooling purpose in the industry and in our buildings. In global terms, uh, the International Energy Agency um, estimates that even taking into account all the pledges that have been uh, um, put on the table after a COP21, so after Paris, uh, the world is still not, would still not be on track to uh, reach this two degree trajectory. So there's a gap, there's a gap that still needs to be closed. So we need additional measures. And these additional measures come mainly from energy efficiency, which is the, 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 the light blue area we see on the left, and also renewables, the green area. The agency foresees that this is not just feasible, but also affordable. It's also affordable, but it will require major shifts, major cha changes in the way the energy sector uh, operates. It will require, first of all, in innovation, a lot of innovation, and investments. In terms of investments, what the, the, the agency foresees is that on an annual basis, between now and 2040, the investments in low carbon technology will have to increase by four times, four times beyond current levels. And these investments in low carbon technology will be mainly uh, focused on energy efficiency and again, renewables. Talking a little bit more on renewables, this is something that was already mentioned here today more than once, actually. Renewables, as we all know, uh, they have, uh, um, the costs have sharply decreased. The technology have learned and at impressive rates. The, the chart that we see on the left uh, refers to solar photovoltaic and on the right, onshore wind. And we see that uh, in the past, uh, in the, since uh, 2009, solar costs have decreased by 90%. And even onshore wind, which is a technology that we all consider already mature, even in wind, for, for onshore wind, the costs have decreased by 50% since 2009. This is one of the reasons uh, behind uh, the fact that uh, um, a lot of predictions regarding installed uh, renewable capacity have been uh, constantly revised upwards. And what we see here on this graph is the way the International Energy Agency has been revising its own predictions for onshore wind on the left and solar on the right. So the, the bottom line is the predictions that they had in 2006, and the top line is the predictions in 2015. So what we can see here is that, for instance, for wind, onshore wind, they, the prediction for installed capacity that they made in 2006 referred to 2013, uh, was short by half. So in practice, in reality, the installed capacity was twice the amount that they predicted. And for solar, the numbers are even more impressive. Uh, the, they, they missed it by almost sev uh, seven times. And so the, the um, renewables are, of course, um, one of the, the main ways going forward, <coughs> main trends going forward with, that we, can, we can't deny. Going back again to the European, the European Union and the numbers for, for investments that the European Commission foresees between now and, and 2035, the European Commission foresees that the power sector alone will have to invest 2.2, some 2.2 trillion dollars. And 70% of this 
will go to generation. And within generation, three-fourths of the investment will have to go to renewables. So we all understand this. So what's the problem with price signals? Why is that we are not seeing price signals reflecting this need for investment? Because in fact, pool prices, uh, at least in, in, uh, in, in our market, it, and the, the numbers shown here are the numbers for, for Iberia, both for the levelized cost and, for, and for, for pool prices, prices are in the range of 40, 50 euros per megawatt hours, which are not sufficient to remunerate any technology. So prices are not seeing the need for investment in any technology. We see here on this graph, um, we, we see many things, but one of, uh, uh, I, I will just like, I like two, uh, two facts. One is that uh, uh, mature, tech, mature renewables like onshore wind and solar are today the most competitive technologies to generate electricity in Iberia. The other thing that I would like, like to highlight in this graph, and because this is very important to understand uh, the, the fundamental reasons why uh, we are in this situation, is the cost structure among the different technologies. The white area on the bars represent fixed costs. And the light gray, I'm afraid you can't see very well, but the light gray represents variable costs. And a, particular, a very particular uh, characteristic of uh, most low carbon technologies, except for, for biomass, biomass is a different thing, but wind, hydro, solar, we're just talking about fixed costs. This is just an investment cost. Even the operation and maintenance cost is mainly fixed. It's mainly a function of time rather than the energy that is produced. And the same applies to nuclear, which is also mainly capital costs. On the other hand, we have fossil fuel fire generation, which has, of course, a capital cost part of it, but it also has a very huge uh, variable costs pertaining to uh, the fuel and, and, and CO2 consumption. And pool prices, by design, they reflect not the full costs that we see here on this graph, but the marginal costs. That means the variable costs. So what I have here on this, on this, um, on this slide is just a schematic representation of how pool prices are defined by construction in a marginalist uh, uh, market model like the one we have uh, in, our, in our market. So the full bars represent the full cost, but uh, the supply curve that the market operator defines is made of bids that, if they are rational, they just represent the variable costs. So renewables and nuclear have almost zero variable costs. And in, the, in a decarbonized world, by construction, by the way this model is defined, if we have fully if we have a perfect competition, if there is no market power, by definition, in a decarbonized world, prices will tend to zero, okay? And this, this is not just conceptual, just to give you, um, this, is, this is actually happening, and these are the real numbers that we've seen in the past uh, five years in Iberia. Each point represents a week, uh, and represents the price that happened in that week, and the share of renewables that we had in the market on that week. So there's a perfect correlation between these two variables. So the more, var the more renewables that we have in the system, the lower prices will be. This is um, structural. This is by design. And this happens because the market design was not built for a low carbon, for a decarbonized world like the one we have today or the one we will have uh, even, uh, even more in the future. This is uh, critical not just for, for renewable technologies, but also for backup, of course, in any, and, and what I have here on this graph, on the left-hand side, we see uh, the historical uh, working hours uh, for combined cycle gas turbines in Portugal and Spain in the past years. And so we see, of course, they are working uh, as, as backup technologies, so we have uh, working hours uh, between 1,000 to 1,000 hours. And on the right-hand side, we see the spreads, the spreads that this technology will require, would, would require on the market to pay for the, 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 the fixed costs. And, uh, and so if we are on the 1,000, 2,000 hour range, the spreads, not prices, spreads required would be something between 50 and 100 euros per megawatt hour. So something that we obviously are not seeing 
in, in the market. So uh, in, in practice, what uh, we um, uh, within EDP are defending that uh, should be done and the model going forward, um, and some just some areas of ev just some avenues of uh, of, uh, of looking into this the spot spot market so the market that I was just describing we don't think that this is something that we should uh, just scrap no of course we need it it's very important that the price signal is very important for operational purpose it's and there's still at all a lot of room to improve it and to, to make it more efficient and integrated. Uh, on ETS, which is something that I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't spend any time talking about it. But we also think that uh, the CO2 price signal is something that needs to be reinforced, and there are uh, some measures uh, being discussed in, in in Europe on how to do this. So we we, we strongly um, defend that this needs to be reinforced at the European le level, not at the national level, of course. For backup technology, uh, uh, backup capacity, uh, we believe that capacity, mar capacity markets are not a, 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 a fix of the market and they should not be seen as something that is uh, a transition or, 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 or remedy. It's something that we see as a fundamental need for uh, a decarbonized world. Um, with harmonized rules, of course, and regional um, the, at the regional level, if possible. Renewables, um, to really invest in renewables and to have the price signal showing the need for investment and to promote the investments in a cost-effective way, the way we see the, 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 the right way to do this is to promote the renewables investments through auctions. auctions um, so competitive mechanisms, but competitive mechanisms so to set a long-term price signal, a long-term contract uh, that truly remunerates and reduces the risk of these technologies. And finally, interconnections, of course, reinforce as long as they are cost effective, that it's cost effective to do that. Um, just to, to highlight two points on, on renewables and non-capacity remuneration mechanisms. This is uh, uh, the way we view things, but this uh, appears to, to be something um, that is, has become more and more consensual. This, uh, this, uh, this, this map here shows the way remuneration schemes have been changing in the world between uh, the, so the, the picture in 2010 and the picture uh, last year. And what we see is that the, the, the red areas are being replaced with more and more blue areas. The red represents uh, feed-in tariffs, and blue represents um, market-based uh, mechanisms. And uh, the, the, the black little hammers that we see on the, on the, on the graph, they represent <coughs> auction mechanisms. So this is uh, something that we see being uh, more and more adopted in many regions of the world. And also for capacity remuneration mechanisms, uh, of course, we all know very well the UK um, example and also f the French uh, new, brand new mechanism, the, also the, the mechanism that will be in place in, in Italy. And this is uh, uh, truly something that is being discussed and uh, it's on the table on, in, in many, many geographies within, within Europe. So just to, to finalize and to recap uh, uh, the, the main points of, uh, of, uh, of my presentation. So basically we have a very ambitious context uh, where we really need to, to decarbonize, but, uh, and, and we truly have uh, competitive technologies to do that, but price signals are not showing that. Price signals are not showing that because uh, there, is, uh, there is a market failure at different levels. And to fix that, uh, the, different, uh, the different measures and instruments that I've, uh, I've uh, described, not just fixing the CO2 price, but uh, promoting stability and long-term visibility over prices, it's something that it's critical to, 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 to reach that decarbonization goal at a cost-effective uh, way. Thank you. <clears throat>